From the planned sinking of the MV Twin Capes Ferry off the coast of Delaware that will create an artificial reef for all kinds of aquatic creatures, to the shocking moment two men were rescued seconds before their boat slipped below the surface and nearly dragged them down with it, here are five incredible sinking ships that were caught on camera. Something you may or may not know is that ships sinking are not always accidental. In fact, often boats or ships are sunk on purpose due to a variety of factors, but most usually due to old age and the condition of the ship. Back on June 15th of 2018, the MV Twin Capes Ferry was sunk somewhere off the coast of Delaware. The ship was christened some 43 years prior to this day and had a long life with thousands of trips taken. But after years of inactivity, the decision was made to sink the ship. After cutting various holes in the hull, water began to pour in, and at 11.55 a.m., the ship sank to the bottom of the sea. Following the successful operation, the ship is now part of Delaware's artificial reef system, a system aimed at expanding and enhancing fish habitats as well as creating spectacular diving opportunities. Perhaps the best shot in the whole video is when you can see the words, Welcome aboard, slowly disappear into the murky waters below. After a long life, the MV Twin Capes now rests 120 feet below the surface. The 2011 earthquake and tsunami that hit Japan was one of the worst natural events in recent memory. The disaster was widely covered and studied by the international press, and I'm sure many of you watching are very familiar with what occurred. But one story you may not have heard before is that of the ship Rio Un Maru. During the tsunami, the ship was pulled from its mooring in the Tohoku prefecture and sent far out to sea. Given the scale of the disaster, retrieving the ship was nowhere near the top of the priority list. After over a year of sailing aimlessly without a crew, the ship was spotted by the Royal Canadian Air Force. A while later, it entered U.S. waters. After a short-lived towing operation, the decision was made to sink the ship. On April 5th of 2012, the Coast Guard opened fire on the ship.
With each hole that was made, more and more water began to fill the hull, and it wasn't long before the ship sank in an estimated 6,000 feet of water. The location where this all occurred was roughly 180 miles off the coast of southeast Alaska, meaning this ship traveled many thousands of miles before being discovered. The fact that this ship was able to float that far for over a year gives you a slight idea as to the scale of the ocean. In the end, the operation was a success and the mysterious ghost ship was finally laid to rest. Deep sea fishing is a very risky profession, not only because you run the risk of being caught in a powerful storm, but because of how long it takes for help to arrive when you are floating far out at sea. Back on October 16, 2018, a group of men were fishing in the Irish Sea when they stumbled upon an unforgettable sight. Off in the distance, they noticed another vessel that was sinking at a rapid rate. Right as they arrived to help, two men in life jackets jumped off the boat right as it completely sank into the ocean. Go this way, yeah. He's asking you to go. Thankfully, the rescue boat arrived just in time and was able to save both men who suffered no injuries. It's pretty miraculous how close they came to being trapped at sea, floating aimlessly. Had this rescue boat not arrived when they did, it's likely nobody would have even seen them once their boat fully sank. It's unknown if the men had called for help or not, but this video definitely goes to show the need for the proper gear and communication equipment should you ever find yourself fishing out in the deep sea. If you were ever in a situation where your ship was sinking at sea, who would you call? If you guessed the Coast Guard, you'd be correct. Back on August 22nd of 2020, a call was received from a group of five people saying that the boat they were on was quickly taking on water and beginning to sink. It wasn't long before a local sheriff arrived on scene, followed closely by the Coast Guard. After making sure nobody was injured, the sheriff began the rescue operation tossing a line out to the boaters and bringing them on board his boat one at a time. After a surprisingly calm couple of minutes, everybody was rescued without injury. Okay, everyone's good? I'm good, better than you. Okay. Okay, you guys, I'm gonna come alongside. Okay. Okay. There you go. We had to drop a bow. Your transmission was broken. We are approximately one minute from you. Grab onto that rope. Pass it to everyone. Off your starboard side. You guys are CBS. Everyone just grab onto that and I'm going to pull you over in a minute. Okay, come on. Give me your shit. Don't pull me in. Don't pull me in, dude. Come here. Come on. I, well, I'm Thank you. I know. down I know. on the other boat. I know. All the way to the bow. All the way to the bow. The boat continued to barely float for several minutes before taking that final plunge to the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico, about 15 miles from the nearest land. 
Unfortunately, it's not exactly known why the boat began to take on water in the first place. Thanks to the quick action of the sheriff and coast guard, though, everybody survived uninjured. Back in the 1970s and 80s, France conducted various nuclear tests in the Mururoa Atoll in the Pacific Ocean. On July 10, 1985, a ship called the Rainbow Warrior set out to this location to protest the blasts. The ship had been used by the international NGO Greenpeace to protest many different causes over the years. On this particular occasion, the French government didn't like that the ship was planning this protest and decided to do something about it. Secret agents attached two mines to the ship and detonated them roughly 10 minutes apart. Unfortunately, a photographer lost his life in this incident, which was heavily criticized around the world at the time. Two years later, in 1987, the ship was refloated for forensic examination but was quickly deemed irreparable. On December 12th of that year, she was towed out to Matari Bay and sunk to create an artificial reef. The attack on the ship was at first denied by the government. That changed when two men were arrested by New Zealand police and the link between them and the government was soon discovered. On September 22, 1985, the government admitted that they were behind this tragedy. The men who were arrested were eventually imprisoned, only to be released a few years later after the French government threatened sanctions against New Zealand if they did not do so. Back in April of 2017, the Turkish Navy ship TCSG-68 was decommissioned and set to be scuttled for use as an artificial reef, a trend that seems to be common everywhere in the world. Video shot in the Aegean Sea shows the whole process from start to finish. Instead of cutting or shooting holes in the hull, the Navy instead pumped water into the ship. Once filled, the ship lost its buoyancy and quickly sank. According to the first commander of the Coast Guard ship, Air John Erkut, the loss of the TCSG-68 was a very sad and emotional moment as the ship had provided great services to the Turkish Navy. But its legacy lives on as a reef and dive site for tourists. Hey, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more just like it, then be sure to click the link on screen now. With that, thank you all for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.